This is Vivo's S1, which comes with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, along with things like a triple camera setup and an in-screen fingerprint sensor, all for dirhams 1049. In the box, the first thing you find is a sleeve with some paperwork and a transparent case. Then there's the phone itself in this beautiful diamond back finish with gold accents around the camera unit. You also find an 18 watt charging brick, a USB type 8 micro USB 2.0 cable which for today's standards is outdated and a pair of 3.5mm headphones. The SIM tool actually was in the sleeve we looked at earlier so here's a look at it now. So jumping back to the phone, I love the colour scheme. The top edge of the phone is bare while on the bottom is the headphone jack the micro USB charging port and speaker. On the right, there's the usual power and volume rocker and on the left is another dedicated button which we'll get into in a bit. Popping the case on, it's a pretty snug fit and for some reason there's a flap to cover the charging port. On the phone, there's a 6.38 inch Super AMOLED display at full HD plus resolution. It's a teardrop style display and is a nice way to consume media so long as you don't accidentally cover the speaker. Unfortunately, there's no HDR on the display, so content is not that rich looking. The display also houses the fingerprint scanner, which works well. As I mentioned before, there's a smart button on the phone, which can be used to trigger Google's Assistant. And that's helpful. But using the phone, you won't notice that the Vivo S1 is running Google's Android 9.0 Pi, and that's because it's heavily skinned by FunTouch OS 9. Because of the bloatware, the phone does have a bit of stutter to it despite the 6GB of RAM and the octa-core MediaTek Helio P65 clocked at 2GHz. There's a lot of software add-ons to be honest, but I don't know how often you'd use them. Aside from processing internals, you've also got a 4500mAh battery on the phone, which is huge and should be great to last you through at least a day and a half worth of heavy usage. But that's something we have to test just like the triple 16, 8 and 2 megapixel camera unit on the S1 as well as the 32MP front snapper. Stay tuned for some interesting camera tests to come but that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more.